There's 52 other backup units here. It is crazy. This uh, config file is massive. So if you guys want to get an idea how to get some special units in here, this is how you do it. Hey, this is Mike with Blue Line Vibes. Hope your day is going good. It's been a couple of years since we did an emergency uniform pack tutorial, and I thought I would throw one up on YouTube. And uh, not really much has changed, but I do want to talk about the backup units. A lot of people have been asking me over the last year, how do you get the air SWAT to show up, you know, air and medivac, stuff like that. And I'm going to show you how I did it. And uh, it's actually free. Everything's free. I'm about to show you today. You just have to download it and then install it properly. So we're going to talk about that in today's video. It's going to go by pretty fast. So just kind of follow along. If I'm going too fast, just kind of rewind the video a little bit and I'm sure you'll pick up. Let's hop over to the internet. I'm going to give you all the links for all this stuff. We're going to get the EUP menu. I'm also going to provide this link right here. It's the updated Rage Native UI. And when you click on the link, it's always going to be up to date. It doesn't matter about the date right here. Here's the Emergency Uniform Pack Law and Order 9.3. Here's the Serve and Rescue 1.5. And here's the EUP backup config that you'll need to have those special units respond version 9.3. Once you have everything downloaded, uh, get it onto your desktop. Over to the left, we have the main game directory. Over to the right, we're going to be installing EUP menu. Go ahead and open up the files folder. Make sure you do not install this Rage Native UI. It'll crash your game. We're going to be installing an updated one in just a moment. Take the plugins folder and let it fall into the main game directory down here. Let it merge properly down here. And once again, don't install that Rage Native UI. It'll crash your game. We just installed EEP menu. Now over to the right, we're going to install that updated Rage Native UI. Grab both files that are down here, Rage Native UI, and just drag it down here to your main game directory. And it may ask you to overwrite because you may already have it, but just make sure you have an updated one. Go ahead and replace. If it doesn't ask you to replace, don't worry about it. That means you need to install it. We're going to pull up a program called Open 4. And yes, I do like to call it Open 4 because it came out three weeks after GTA 4 was released. You don't say GTA IV, do you? That's kind of weird. Now over to the left, the Open 4 program is open. Now let's go ahead and turn on edit mode. Say yes. Now, if you're not familiar with Open 4, if you've never installed it before, I'm going to link you a video at the top right of your screen right there. It'll take you to a really fast video to show you how to install Open 4 and a little bit of uh, tips and tricks to how to navigate a little bit better. You should only have to do this one time. Go to Tools at the very top of your menu and go to ASI Manager. Make sure these are all in green right here. If they're in blue, make sure you install all three of these. We're going to be installing the EEP Law and Order first. Now, make sure you click in the white, anywhere in the white inside Open 4, otherwise it will not activate the window. Then take this OIB file and just literally throw it into Open 4 like this. Now the law and order will say 8.3. Just realize that is a mistype by the mod author. It's supposed to be 9.3. We're going to click on install. If you don't have a mods folder, don't worry about it. It will create one for you. Click on mods folder and then click on install. Depending on how fast your hard drive is, it'll probably take about maybe 10 seconds. Installation succeeded and close that out. Now we're going to install the uh, serve and rescue 1.5. If you try to pull it in, if you get a red circle with a line through it, don't let that worry you. Click here in the white one more time to activate the window. Grab the file again and now pull it into Open 4. And same as the other one, it's a mistyped here. It's supposed to be 1.5. It says 1.4. I'm going to click on Install and go to the Mods folder and click on Install. Installation succeeded. Go ahead and close. And we're done with Open 4. Now over to the left, we have the main game directory. Over to the right, we have the EP backup config. Now there's two steps you want to follow. Otherwise, you can overwrite your game files. We don't want to do that. Within your main game directory, go to LSPFR is in lower capital letters. It is above your plugins folder. You're going to see a data file right there. Make sure you make a copy of that just in case you want to revert anything because we're about to overwrite a lot of these data files right here. So my advice is to highlight and then left control C and then click down here and left control V or right click paste and it'll look like this right here. Let's go ahead and back this up. Now you need to have ultimate backup installed. If you don't have ultimate backup installed or if you're not sure how to install that, look to the top right of your video. There is a very fast video that will teach you how to install the ultimate backup. It's pretty easy. When you have ultimate backup installed, we're going to go to plugins right here and then go to LSBFR in upper capital letters. Then you're going to see a folder called ultimate backup. Go ahead and open this file. And then my advice is make another folder in here. We're going to right click, go to new. We're going to label this something very simple. The game is not going to be able to find it anyway. We're going to say UB for short for ultimate backup. And then I'm just going to date it. It's real important to do that. That way you don't overwrite your files by accident. I'm going to highlight custom regions. I'm going to hold down my left control key. And then I'm going to left click on default regions. And then I'm going to left click on special units. Go ahead and uh, right click. I'm going to copy. Now it's going to that folder right there. Ultimate backup. And that's just the date that I'm making this video. And then right click paste. Now we have a backup copy right there because we're about to override all these. But for now, we're going to go to the very top of the folder right here, and we're going to click on plugins. And then we're going to click on this uh, name right there, Grand Theft Auto 5. It's just a little easier to get back to your main game directory this way. And now let's open up the ultimate backup config to the right. Let's open this folder here, then go to modification files, 
really into LAPD, you can click on this one right here. But for now, we're gonna click on original version. And there's several other folders right here to kind of choose from. I'm gonna click on no hats and you're gonna see three more versions. Now the only difference between all three of these versions is the type of gear that they respond in. So a normal version, they'll still respond with a jacket and also if it's raining in the game. And these two right here, they're gonna be responding with more snow gear, more rain gear. But my advice is to go to the normal version. And you can see a Grand Theft Auto 5 folder and that is what we're inside right now. We're gonna open this and you're gonna see a LSPFR folder and a plugins folder. If you made backups, what I just mentioned a minute ago, you're all good. We'll take both of these folders and just drag them down here. It's going to ask to overwrite some files. And we're going to say replace. And we got it installed. That's it. We're going to go to the plugins folder. If you want to see some special units, I'll show you what you can change a little bit. Go to plugins. Go to LSPFR and upper capital letters. And then go to ultimate backup right here. Now you can't really open these up in Notepad too well, but you can download a program that's free, extremely lightweight, called Notepad++. It's an XML file editor. Once you have that installed, I'll show you the link down below in the description. It only takes a couple of seconds to install it. You're going to come up here and you're going to right click. You can go to open with and find your Notepad++ application. If you can't find it, just go to choose another app and you can probably find it that way. When you click on Notepad++ for the first time, it'll probably ask you want to open it once or always with Notepad++. I would say always. Once you do that one time, now you can come back and just double click right here. Now my Notepad++ is going to be opening up in a black background. Yours is going to be white. This is the preference that I have mine set up as. And here's all the really cool units you can have responding. This document is really huge. And with Notepad++, the cool thing is you can come in here and modify these things. A lot of people ask me, how do you rename the backup units? This is where you do it right here. You can rename it anything you want right here. So instead of Air Ambulance, because it sounds too generic, how about we rename this right here? Make sure you're inside the quotes. We'll call it Medivac. So we renamed our Air Ambulance to Medivac. You can call that anything you want, like Care Flight, Air Medivac, anything you want. Just make sure it's in that quotation marks. Now the pull map is going to be a generic uh, type of default and the delivery number two technically is going to be the medical livery for your pull map. If you modify the liveries and such, if you know how to do all that, then just make sure the delivery corresponds with your medical livery. For example, I have a pull map, have a LSPD style police livery for number one. Then I have more of a medical livery as shown here on the video with livery number two. And yes, you can come in here and change this pull map to something different if you've got it installed. We're not going to talk about the responding units uniforms too much because I did a video over there on Patreon. It would take another probably 25, 30 minutes to uh, really educate everybody about the responding units uniforms. But if you're really interested, be sure to check that out. If you scroll a little bit further down, you're going to see another one called Air SWAT Unit. So that kind of, sounds kind of cool. I like it. But you can feel free to change the name right there if you want. All these zones right here are going to pretty much represent the uh, bottom half of the map right here. And we're still under the air SWAT unit. I just realized this is going to be more of the Los Angeles Sheriff's Office area, starting around the Humane Labs. So all those right there are the same zones, more of the upper part of the map. And here's another one for the upper part of the map. It is Blaine County Sheriff Air SWAT Backup. You see a little bit of code that is kind of uh, misplaced like this. I don't like that worry. It'll still recognize it. Notice the uh, pull map is also responding, but it's livery number one, which is going to represent more of the police livery. Here's another air SWAT backup. This is San Andreas State Parks air SWAT backup. Kind of crazy, right? There's so many backup units, guys. Here's another one, Rockford Hills Air SWAT Backup. These are mainly for the regions. Here's one right here for Bicycle Patrol. Feel free to rename that if you want. Here's all the zones, kind of like more of the south part of the map. Here's another one for Sheriff's Department. Here's for Blaine County Sheriff. San Andreas State Parks. Here's Rockford Hills. Here's one for Del Perro. Then here's another uh, backup unit right here. It's called Bobcat Security Armor Division. I'm not going to go through every one of these, but I think you kind of understand how these are going to go. Uh, feel free to rename the name right here within the quotes. But I want to make the video too complicated. Uh, just realize that they have, uh, for example, the FBI 2 slot. And it's using livery number one. And once again, that is the Bobcat Security Armor Division. If you have an add-on vehicle, this is where you would add it in. And this goes for any unit, by the way, that is a responding unit. For example, if you want to install another vehicle, you can take this line of code right here. I like that line of code. Left control C. I click at the end of the code. Push your entry key. Left control V. Maybe this one is like FBI. When you do that, you have to understand the PAX chance. This has to do with uh, the chance of the vehicle spawning in. So if you have two vehicles, this one here needs to equal 50. And this one here needs to equal 50. You could do two more if you want and then change these to 25. The PAX equals two represents how many people are going to be in the car. So this is a minimal of two people. If we're like the Border Patrol, for example, if you want to rename that to ICE, um, I'm totally kidding on that. Uh, no, great. I'm going to get demonetized. Uh, it's defaulted to the FBI too. I went ahead and created another line of code right here and named it FBI. 
the pack chance is 50. This is also 50. But also I have an undercover uh, vehicle that I have as an add-on. I like the line of code. Now you will not have this, so I suggest that you don't do this. Click at the end of the line of code, press enter, left control V. This right here is gonna be my undercover van. And once again, don't do this unless you have it installed. You see van. So the pack chance is gonna be off because it equals 150%. So we need to make sure these are 100%. I'm gonna change this to 25. Change this one to 25. This one right here, I'm gonna change to 75. And for the packs chance on this one, this is undercover van. It's more of a jump out boy style video. I'll show you what it looks like on the screen. A lot of four responding units on this one. This is just an example for the border patrol slash ice. Now, one thing about Notepad++, I highly encourage you to do, go to plugins, and then go to plugins admin right here. And you wanna look for a plugin called XML tools. It'll be at the very bottom and I already have it installed, but it'll say XML tools. Uh, for example, say for example, if this said XML tools, you'd click here, then you click on install. I already have it installed. And once you get that installed, it only takes a couple seconds. And if you go to plugins, XML tools, you can enable XML syntax, auto check. I'd probably advise you to do that. Or you can click right here. This is what I like to do before I close everything or save it. Click on right here where it says check XML syntax now. Click right there. And it'll tell you if you have any error messages. Show you how well this works. Just anywhere the document, say you're editing. You're getting ready to save this, but make sure you check for your syntax error. Go to plugins, go to XML tools, and then say check XML syntax now. I'm gonna go ahead and check it now, and it'll go right to the source of the problem. If it's not right here, it'll be right above that. See that right there is highlighted? You can see right there there's a missing bracket. We're gonna go ahead and make sure we close that, and now I completed it. Up here to plugins, XML tools, check XML syntax now. There's no errors detected. Now you can safely save this document. I know there's several other divisions. I don't wanna make the video too long. Uh, if you make any changes, uh, make sure you save it. But before you do that, make sure you go to plugins again, go to XML tools and check for syntax errors. And no errors detected, we're all good. I'm gonna do left control S. And let's go into the game. I'll show you what the uniforms look like. And once you get into the game, you can uh, have the Raid Shook load it for you every time, but I kinda like to load it myself personally. And that is the EEP menu. So I'm gonna press my F4 Rage console, press F4. I'm gonna type in load plugin, then start typing out EUP, and you'll see it spelled out for you right there. Press tab and press enter. This one takes about maybe four or five seconds to load. Once it gets loaded in, and now you have access to your EUP menu. Now, technically you don't have to be on duty to even use the EUP menu, but it just so happens that I'm, I am on duty right now uh, with LSPDFR. I'm gonna press my F11 key. Now, if it overlaps with another key like it is right now for my call-out interface, I'm gonna press F11 again. Uh, that would be just out of the EP menu. I'm gonna go to EP Law and & Order, and you can start going through the uniforms right here. I'm not gonna go through every one of these. The video would be way too long, uh, but they do have like a Class A, Class B, Class C, for example. Now, uh, they do have a jacket, they have a coat. Uh, you have a raincoat closed, open, hood, you know, these are the ones, but we're not gonna really talk about all this because it would take the video be way too long. There is tons of different uniforms in here that you can choose from. Here's the Los Angeles Sheriff's Office. I can do class C. Here's the uh, San Andreas Highway Patrol. I'm just gonna go through a couple of these. Uh, every one of these has uh, jackets as well. Uh, here's different Ranger classes. There's a uh, class C there. There's a class A, for example. And like I said, every one of these have an actual, you know, coats and stuff like that. There's tons of other ones in here as well. I like the BCSO is a good one uh, for the Northern counties. And once again, they do have a coat. If you're unhappy with the hat, for example, uh, like I'm not really fond of this hat, I don't like it. So I'm gonna press backspace key uh, one more time. We're gonna do backspace again. And we're gonna go to wardrobe. And then uh, press enter. And uh, what you wanna do, I already created some uh, different classes right here. You're not gonna have that until you start creating your own wardrobe. I go down here to create outfit, press enter. And they call it anything you want. Then I'm gonna press enter. But if I don't wanna have any kind of hat, then I'm just gonna arrow over to the left. And then I'm gonna make it with no hat. If I'm okay with the microphone being in the left upper sleeve there, very top of the uh, uniform right there, that's perfectly fine. But if you're not happy with that, there's always ways to change everything. So arrow up and then go to armor. Uh, 14 is going to be the upper shoulder, which looks rather nice. But if you want to know the chest, arrow to the right, and it'll be on the chest right there. And once you're done, go ahead and come down here to save and continue. Otherwise, it's not going to save your uniform. However, if you want to have maybe some sunglasses, for example, 
because of it's sunny outside, right? I'm going to keep arrowing over to the right until I get to the sunglasses that I like. Then I'm going to do number pad 6 key and then change the texture. Once I'm happy, I'm going to scroll upwards this time until I get to save and continue and press enter. For the LSPD, I chose to give it a sergeant decal. That is the insignias on the sleeve right there. If you're not happy with those, then make sure you go down to edit outfit and then scroll upwards to get to decals. If you want to make him a corporal, for example, uh, you can uh, use the number pad keys four or six. It'll change the texture of that decal. So if I go over to the left and maybe you want to make him a corporal like that, or you can make him a higher rank. Or if you do number pad six, keep on arrowing over and then you'll get to a higher rank if you'd like. But be advised, if you are, uh, the decal is going to be 16 right there for the short sleeve. If I arrow over to the left, you may think this looks okay, and you start to change a few things like this. But then if you look over in the left sleeve, it's broken. So make sure that the decal is going to be represent number 16. And then use the number pad 4 or 6, and you can get to the proper decal like that. Once you're done, come down here and save it. If you're not grabbing your shoulder mic, if you're grabbing your chest, for example, press your M key, M is in mic. We go down to police radio. So it's like grabbing the chest like this, and you're talking to dispatch, and you're not happy with that. Then you, what you wanna do is arrow to the left, you'll grab your shoulder. If you arrow to the left, again, it'll be none. This will be handheld. If you go to the left again, this is gonna be earpiece. There's chest, your shoulder. You don't have to save this, just press backspace. Now for the backup units, remember we renamed it from uh, Air Ambulance to Medivac. That's how we're going to spell it right there too. Uh, feel free to change that within your special units XML file. You can change that name, okay? Just be uh, kind of careful there. Make sure you, you're staying within the quotes. Should be all good. But technically it's about 52 backup units. This is uh, one, two, three, four. So we're four out of 57. There's 52 other backup units here. It is crazy. This uh, config file is massive. So if you guys want to get an idea how to get some special units in here, this is how you do it. Here's a first responder, fire, medic, and whatnot. Here's group, group security, harbor patrol. There's tons of other stuff in here. The backup type, you know, it just kind of depends on how fast they're going to come, okay? So if I go to uh, code three, they're going to be coming in pretty fast. And once again, we do have the medivac still there. We have an air SWAT unit. There's a bicycle patrol. And I would spawn all these in here and just tell them to come on in, but it'd be too much if I'm being totally honest. But I kind of wanted to touch on this because the, there's so much stuff you could do. And depending on where you are on the map, uh, they will respond in different kinds of uniforms. And uh, you could also change, you know, the different kinds of uh, response types that are coming with what car they're coming in. I'm going to be doing a little more detailed uh, type of jurisdiction type stuff over there on Patreon. And uh, as I said before, I'm not trying to sell Patreon, but if I don't if I don't talk about it, nobody will join, right? So it does start at a dollar. Uh, you know, that's something to kind of think about. Uh, it's well worth the knowledge base because you're getting hours and hours and hours of you know, exclusive type content that is uh, it takes LSPFR, you know, modding to the next level, a little bit more serious than your standard, you know, YouTube video, if you will, from regular content creators out there. Of course, I'd take it to the next level. But uh, feel free to give me a look-see on Patreon. And if you feel like joining, uh, be sure to do that. There's well over 40 plus videos over there now. All exclusive stuff that's never before seen on YouTube. Uh, but hopefully you will visit me. And then until next time, we'll see you on the next patrol, guys. Take care and stay safe.